Well, uh, you fought uh, you fought Buster Mathis Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that was ended up. Well, I, I guess you ended up. Uh, there was an accidental blow that happened. See what happened? He was trying to elude my, elude my punches. He didn't want me to hit him, and he was dipping real low. And so I'm not thinking he dipped low, but he's on his knee. I didn't realize he was on his knee, and I hit him and knocked him out. So they called it no contest. I should have won that one by knockout too. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Well, in 94, you had a fight set up with Larry Donald. And then there was a pre-fight uh, press conference, which you ended up punching him. Well, he kept telling me, I'm going to knock you out, sucker. And, you know, Ali's my idol. And I felt like he was doing my idol better than me. Come on, sucker. He he would say things where people couldn't hear him. And, you know, then he looked back at me like he really wanted to fight. So I said, look, Larry, stop playing with me because I'm going to wind up hurting you. And I had to show him I, I was for real. And so that's what happened. Okay. And then when the fight happened, uh, you ended up beating him in a unanimous decision. And he was 16-0 and 0 at that time. Mm, when I got done, it was 16-1. and 1. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. And this was the buildup for Bo Holyfield 3. Uh, how did you feel going into that fight? I felt I felt pretty good. I, I thought that, you know, I could redeem myself, which I did. And so the fight, the fight went just like I expected it. But um, he knocked me down. I didn't expect that. I didn't. So after he knocked me down, I got up. I said, okay, now I can really show everybody what I made of. And that's exactly what I did. Right. And uh, that lasted eight rounds. Yeah. See, he was tasting toe now and didn't know he was going to be tasting it before time. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, that third fight with Holyfield, mm -hmm. was it a tougher fight than the previous fights or was Holyfield pretty much consistent every fight? It was consistent, but I think because I had the ability to, to think, that's why I wanted to fight. And that's why I say, he was tasting toe now. You know what that mean, right? What does that mean? I put my foot in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so you won two out of three fights. I Holy won Field. three out of three, man. Okay. okay. I don't know, how, how can you give him the second fight? It was so close. It should have just been a draw. I'm the yeah. undisputed champion, and he's the challenger. How can you give him the fight? That was politics that that, that played that played against me. Uh, but ultimately, regardless of how that one fight went, you still got the overall victory versus Holyfield, no matter who who actually looks at it. But it should be three and not two. I, but Holyfield's a good guy. I love him. I take nothing away from him. I just, want, I just feel like I should have won that fight. But he's a great guy. He prays for me. And I, I, and I love him if the truth be, if the truth be told. I love him and Holyfield. Are you guys still talk? Absolutely. Every day, every day. Every, every morning, he, you know, he sends me some scriptures and things of that nature. Oh, okay. That's what's up. So God That's bless him. I love you, Vander. Mm. Well, and I guess after that fight, that's when you went to South Africa and met, met up with uh, Nelson Mandela? Right. Mm -hmm. I met the Pope. Yep. Mm -hmm. That as well. What was it like to meet Mandela? Um, It, it was funny. Um, you know, Mandela he used to be a boxer as well. So oh, I yeah. met him, and we clicked as soon as we got to know each other. He is very nice, and he loved his people, and, you know, he, he was a good dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, someone who sat in prison that long for his beliefs, even though he could have gotten out early by denouncing, you know, basically being a sellout, which he never did. Right. And to come out and transform that whole country is just, is just amazing, man. Unbelievable. Rest in, rest in peace. Yeah. He, he's he's going to be in heaven. He's one of the guys that ain't in heaven. Okay. And then by 1996... You fought Andrew Galata. Right. 
once again a train wreck. Want to buy me again? I said once again a train wreck. Another yeah. I was drugged for each fight, where I would see three people, and I'm seeing Andrew Glau. I would see three of them. He said, I don't know if they hit this one or this one, the one in the middle at the end of that. But I just kept fighting, and he the one who, who quit. Okay. And at one point, he just started hitting with low blows. Because he didn't want to be there no more. He wanted to get out of the fight because I hit him with a shot, and they cut him, and he, he didn't want to be there no more. Right. And I guess leading up to the fight, you didn't really train because they asked you, you know, how's your training going? You said, how do you train for a bum? Well, pretty much, but the second fight was different. I trained more so, but I was drugged prior to the fight. Well, let's talk about the first fight for a second. After he finally hit you, basically in the testicles, you know, I believe it was in the seventh round. Couple hit me a couple of times. Yeah. He hit, you, he hit you a few times. He kept, he kept getting points taken off, but that and final you time. But I got to tell you something. I'm black, right? Mm -hmm. When I got to my room, you know what I had? What's that? Blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the point that the referee basically disqualified him, all hell broke loose in that ring. And... Uh, Basically, one of your guys started hitting Galata with like a two-way radio in the face, uh -huh. which gave him eleven stitches. When and then you know Galata's seventy-four-year-old trainer, uh, Luduva, he ended up collapsing, and they had to take him out on a stretcher. I mean, when you saw that fight break out in the ring with with the entourages, what'd you think? I was bewildered. I didn't know what was going on. I know whatever was taking place, it really didn't have nothing to do with me. I guess people were just angry, maybe because of they saw what was happening to me in the fight. But other than that, it had nothing to do with me. Right, because, uh, I mean, people start fighting with the spectators, with the staff, with the police. Like, it was just just a, a complete rumble. I was bewildered because, again, I had never seen nothing like it before. Okay, and then in December of that year, there was a rematch. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, the same bullshit. He did the same thing. What I couldn't understand was this. Why would my manager make another fight with the same dude? We would get the same, we got the same results. So why would I make a fight with him? I, I don't understand. And I guess I was the type of guy, well, I didn't care who he picked. I was going to fight him, but why him? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I remember during that time, there were stories where uh, in Galata's training camp, they actually put trunks on the heavy bag <laughs> to try to train him not to hit below the belt. But I guess that didn't work because once again, he hit you below the belt a bunch of times and got disqualified. Let me, let me explain something to you. The reason why I believe he hit me uh, below the belt is because he could knock me out and then he realized I don't want to be here no more. So... He was doing things to get out of there. He didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah, I mean, it worked. He got out of there. Well, it worked ass, too. 